Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're talking about uh, <laughs> this thing. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> let's dive in. So basically what happened was a Stanley 71 and a 45 got together one night and nine months later you have the 171. <laughs> okay, to be honest, you have to kind of understand the time where this came out to understand what exactly it's for. Nowadays, if you install a door in a house, it comes pre-hung. But back in the door, if you put trim on the house and you were a finished carpenter, you made the jam and often you made the door. Now, sometimes you may have purchased that from a cabinet shop, but you still had to put the hinges in, you had to put the lock in, and you had to make all the holes that make the door what it is. So because of that, there were lots of tools in the market dedicated to installing hinges and installing locks. It just made the job easier because it's kind of tedious and if you have a tool that does it really well then you've got a tool that you can use and you can make money with now stanley had the hinge butt mortiser it may look like a scrub plane but it's actually a router plane a very very simple router plane and what it does is it comes in and it will round out the hinge butt mortises so you can get a mortise slot for the hinge to fit into it works fairly well but the problem is it's all about skill there's nothing to hold it in place and you can't do it really well with the 71 because on the edge of a door uh, there's just not enough Enough stability there to give you what you want. But Stanley noticed something. Their combination planes have been selling really, really well. The 45 is actually a really well-selling plane that a lot of people love. And they said, well, what if we took this and we put a fence on it? They added a few more bells and whistles and came up with the Stanley 171. This has a fence on it, so I can register that up against the side, and I can know exactly how far in I'm routing. That way I'm not going past my line, and I can just focus on routing. But unlike the 71, which has one tightening knob here, this one's got two tightening knobs and a lever and the screw coming up, and it just looks kind of confusing. So to really explain what this thing can do, let's actually use it and make a hinge mortise. So here's a piece of white oak, about the right size for a door. Normally you'd put your hinge on there and you would mark around it to figure out what you want. But as with any trade, things became standardized and there was a tool for that. Stanley made the number 374. These are all hinge butt markers and they're standard sizes. We have the three, three and a half, and the four. With the little stops on there, I can put them in there and then I can just pound it down. And not only do we have the exact size of our hinge marked out, we have our starting cuts in there. A little bit deeper than I could even make with a marking knife. Often the corners were square, so I could come into the chisel and I could extend these lines and square them off. But as we know, most hinges now are rounded, and so you could find a gouge that matches your round, put it on there, and with a few quick taps, you've got a rounded corner that matches your hinge. Now in comes the 171. I can put my knife on the line and then I can loosen up these and slide this fence in to give me the exact placement so that my cutter won't go over the line. Then you've got this weird doohickey up here and I can actually rotate this to raise and lower the cutter. So I can set it for just a light pass right there and I can lock this down onto this. And then there's a second screw here that actually locks this foot in place so it doesn't want to rotate very easily. And now for the main event, we can finally come in and cut. Taking a little bit of a heavy cut, but with some tapping, we can get in, and we're down to depth here. Now, here's the first problem. The blade's going that way, and I need to go up against that line. Um, if I turn this around, now my fence is in the wrong place, and how do I fix that? Well, Stanley said, well, that's, that's easy. You take this screw, you loosen it, you push this lever down, and then you can rotate the foot. Ooh, look at that. Now it's exactly the same spot, exactly the same depth. And we can come in here, and we can go the other direction. Then I can set the cutter in here, go down a little bit deeper, loosen up this nut, run it a quarter round the other direction, let it pop down, and now we can tighten it all back up into place, and we can go a little deeper. Once we finish in that direction, then we can loosen it, pop the lever, rotate this all around again, have all the exact same settings, and come back at it the other way. After two to three passes, you're left with a really nice clean mortise with either a sharp corner or a rounded corner that your hinge will fit into perfectly. It's kind of designed to take the guesswork out of it, so you don't need quite as much skill. With this, you have to have a little bit of skill to keep between the lines. With this, you can teach someone how to cut a mortise really quickly. Now it went from something that the tradesmen had to do, down to something that you could teach an apprentice to do pretty quickly. 
And that's not all the features this had. Number one, you could get different cutters, so you can get different widths on there. Number two, you'll notice that this is a separate piece. I can take this screw off, pull the foot off, and just sharpen that rather than having the whole thing in play. There are also three holes through the sole, one, two, and three, so I could put on a wooden sole on here if I wanted that. And then of course all the other knobs and buttons so that I can move it up and down, I can rotate the foot, and we can have all the settings on here to go any particular direction I want, and still turn this into a nice quick router and maintain my depth. Honestly, it was a really well thought through tool. And Stanley thought, you know, the 45 is selling really well, these are gonna sell really well because it, it kind of has that same feel to it. The problem is, the Stanley 45 replaced a bunch of planes, and it has a lot of other features it can do. This replaced one plane, and it replaced a very cheap plane. People could buy two or three of these for the price of one of these. And yeah, you could teach an apprentice to use this in an hour or two pretty quickly, but honestly, you could teach an apprentice to use this in just a couple hours more. It doesn't really save that much, and so because of that, these didn't sell all that well. But that means now they're collectible, and now their value has gone up. So now it's story time. Recently, I put a new bedroom in our basement. We had to put up a wall with a new door, and unfortunately my ceiling was too low for the door, so I had to cut it off. And that meant I had to reposition the hinges, and I thought, great, I could actually use this to show how to do the hinges. But then I really thought about it for a moment, and I was really like, no, if, if I'm going to do it, I have one hinge to do. I, I don't want to take the time it takes to set this up. I just grabbed this and did it, because there's no setup on this. It just cut it. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons why you don't see that many of these, and you do see quite a few of these out there, because, you know, it works. It works really well, and if for the price, eh, go for the cheap one. But then I thought, that's great, I can use my hinge mortise markers. But these are created for little round corners or sharp corners. And as time went on, hinges got more and more rounded. And now the round goes almost all the way around. And so I can't use these to mark out my hinges. So I had to do it the old fashioned way, put the hinge down and mark around with a knife and then come in with this and remove the waste. Worked pretty well, but it's kind of interesting how standards change over time. Now there are lots of other things I could talk about on the 171. It is a rather fascinating tool, a really well thought through tool that does the job incredibly well. But as with a lot of tools, once you put, start putting a lot of bells and whistles onto it, um, the price goes up, and in all honesty, that makes it a little more difficult and time consuming. Unless you're doing that one particular job over and over and over again, sometimes it's just easier to freehand it. So I'd love to hear from you. Do you have a Stanley 171? Have you ever used it? Um, do you prefer it one way or the other? What's your favorite way of cutting a hinge? I love reading those comments because I learn a lot from it and that really does help me out. So thank you. I do read through all the comments and I respond to most of them. So uh, if you want to do that, that is wonderful. And it does help out the channel. Huge thank you to that. Anytime you hit the like, you comment, you share, you subscribe. Thank you. You're helping us in front of more people. You're helping content like this continue to go. That means more than I can say. Now, if you want to take it one step farther and really help out the channel, you can look at all the names over here. Those are all the patrons on Patreon. Those are the people who are financially supporting this channel and keeping us going. Without all the patrons on Patreon, we would not exist. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer. And if you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to patreon.com backslash woodbyright or click the little description down link. Or you could become a member here on YouTube and do it that way. We have special perks for both and that really means a lot. So thank you for that. So until next time, have a wonderful day. I love tools with bells and whistles.